Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I've been thinking a lot lately about the rapid increase in awareness of the STEM crisis in this country. There are now hundreds of organizations that are involved in STEM education. In some ways, this newfound awareness may actually have caused some confusion, or at least a loss of clarity with regard to the problem that we face. Tonight, I'd like to focus on one key point. There's no doubt that we face an uphill battle to replace an aging technical workforce with talented and well-trained young professionals that can carry our country's industries into the future. We have a responsibility here that should not be overlooked, a responsibility to the generations that came before us to ensure the continuity of the legacy that's been left for us, and a responsibility to future generations to leave them with an economy that will meet the nation's future needs. But how do we achieve that? Clearly, the solution must ultimately lead to sound industries that are poised to be competitive on an international stage. To do that, we have to begin with the proper resources, and that begins with a properly trained workforce. The best legacy that we can leave is to ensure that there are enough young men and women with the right tools and skills to step in and take over when we hand over the corporate reins to them. This is the largest single contributor to the future success of the companies that we represent. In today's global marketplace, we must acknowledge that we cannot be successful by remaining passive and assuming that the educational process will properly take place without our direct involvement. We need to start thinking about this differently. Education is not the government's problem. It's not the school district's problem. It's our problem. We own it. We will either benefit from its solution or we'll suffer from the effects of our failure to do so. Creating a continuous and integrated pathway that allows us to lend our volunteerism and professional expertise to this effort is an overriding goal of all of the cumulative efforts that are being undertaken by the SAE Foundation. The programs being nurtured by the Foundation are oriented towards developing tomorrow's workforce. These programs have a strong track record in identifying students with STEM talent, keeping them engaged throughout their education, and ultimately result in the development of future scientists, engineers, and leaders that will carry our industries into the next generation. But these programs can only continue to be effective with your support. So I thank each and every one of you for all that you do, no matter how small or how large the contribution. Tonight, I'm here to help honor two of our finest future leaders with the Stefan Pishinger Young Industry Leadership Award. Tonight's awardees reflect the kind of professional and leadership skills that will be necessary to guide our industries into the future and ensure that our companies remain competitive on a global stage. We need thousands of new people like them. So please, if you take anything away from tonight's event, I hope you take the message back to your organizations to get involved and continue to support our efforts. I'm going to turn the podium back over to Daniel now to announce the winners, who will then have a chance to say a few words to our audience this evening. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Now, please welcome our first Young Industry Award recipient, Maria Cristina Herrera from Caterpillar. Maria Cristina? Wow, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so excited to be here for the first time in the capital of the automobile industry. And I'm extremely honored to receive this award. I wanna thank my colleagues in Caterpillar, and I wanna thank SAE Foundation for um, giving me this award. This is something that I didn't expect. I was really surprised. I wanna also thank my family my husband who is here, who is the engineer that challenges me every day at home. <laughs> my children um, in Peoria, Illinois, my mom and my sisters. 
When I came here, wow, I was so excited to see all these children in these pictures. They give me an, a lot of energy to go back home and go to work tomorrow. But something I was thinking that shaped my life or has been shaping my life during the last year is the need and the opportunity to go out from my comfort zone. As a geotechnical engineer, passionate for rocks and soils, I had to go to study other areas during my PhD that I never imagined. Also, during the last eight years in Caterpillar, I have been working with multiple engineers from different fields that have been moving me out from my, are my arena. It's not necessarily easy, but I think I have been growing and I have been found new passions. As we try to encourage our kids to get deep into science and technology, let's help them finding the comfort and the confidence that they can go and move, uh, move out from their comfort zone of mo or move the fence of their comfort zone by creating an environment where they, where they feel secure, where they feel that their ideas are valued, where they feel challenged, where they don't, are not afraid of being questioned or criticized in a positive way. So if there is a message today, I feel so encouraged and grateful for being here and see all of you and spend this night and evening with you at the same time with all those children that were so excited. Let's try to keep that encouragement and let's help them build confidence that they always can go explore other areas out from their comfort zone. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Please welcome our second Young Industry Award recipient, Dr. Scott Curran from Oak Ridge National Labs. Dr. Curran. Thank you to the SAE Foundation for this great honor. Um, as a career researcher, I've always been worried that what I'm doing currently is not going to make a difference in the near term. And it's, it's kind of funny to trace how I got here, and mine was really an aha moment. So I was very fortunate to get involved with undergraduate research during my sophomore year. And I really had this romantic research notion in my head that you know only the smartest people in the world got to make new things. And the trust that my teachers had in me to be able to work with them on new and interesting concepts really got me to a level of excitement that sustained me through three degrees in engineering. And you don't just accidentally get degrees in engineering. So I've been able to keep this excitement with me. And I'm, I'm one of those slightly extrovert engineers, so I've noticed some people's shoes tonight as well. But it's, it's really been talking about sustainable transportation and alternative fuels and hybrid vehicles that, that gets me out and talking to people and working with the AWEM tools to engage K through 12 students to, to get them as excited as I am so they can be the, the, the postdocs that I will hire in the future and the industry guys that I'll get to work with in the future. So again, I, I thank you for this great opportunity and I thank SAE Foundation's continued work in supporting K through 16 STEM opportunities. Thank you. <laughs> 